Hi, today we're going to talk about keyboard shortcuts. If you're new to Corel Draw, or even if you've been using it for some time, you may not make enough use of keyboard shortcuts. When you think about it, you're using your right hand, if you're right handed, to draw. It's a Bezier curve here. So you're drawing with your right hand, your left hand's not doing anything, so you might as well use your left hand on your keyboard. To, to replace some of the shortcuts up here on your uh, toolbar, down here on your flyouts. That'll make it uh, easier to draw because you're going to keep your cursor here on the page where it belongs. So the first uh, keyboard shortcut we're going to learn is Control Z, which is undo. So Control Z will undo the last step you did. So if you don't like something, Control Z will take you back to what you did before. If you decide you liked it in the first place, one I use less often, Control shift z will bring you back, redo what you did. And as you know, delete deletes the object. So let's draw a geometric shape here. I'm hold down Control and draw a little circle. I'm going to fill it in on my color palette, eliminate the outline on my color palette, and a shortcut you're going to use all the time, especially at the beginning of a drawing, is to select an object, hit your P key, and that'll bring it right to the center of the page that you're working with. This is an 8.5 by 11. Works with guidelines too. If you select a guideline and hit P, it'll bring it to the center. P brings it to the center. So now we have this page perfectly quartered with our object right in the center of it. Now another one I use sometimes and not always, so I like to be able to turn it on and off, is snap to guidelines. So as you can imagine, that will snap an object to the guidelines and I, ha I don't have it enabled now. So we'll go up here to our toolbar. Now if you can't read these, it's because YouTube uh, defaults to a low resolution display. If you go down to the little gear icon, which is your settings, you can convert it to high definition and this should all come into focus. Up here under view, you can see each of these has an underscore under one of the letters. The one under V is, uh, is under the V. What that means is if I hold down my Alt key and click V, that opens up my view menu. Now I have to keep holding down Alt because it doesn't know which of these I want. The one I want is right here, Snap to Guidelines. You can see the underscore is under the U. So if I continue to hold down Alt and click U, now Snap to Guidelines is enabled and I can easily line an object up to the guideline without having to eyeball it. Now once I'm done with that, I want to turn it back off and the same Alt V view alt u guidelines will turn that feature off so i usually keep it off but a lot of times i want to use it it's good to know the shortcut now let's get rid of these select a guideline and hit delete to get rid of it and i'll draw another shape this is also geometric Make it blue and get rid of the outline. Now these are both geometric shapes, meaning you can enlarge and reduce them. You can skew them. You can do a lot of things, but you can't shape them out. To do that, you have to convert them to curves, which it's another shortcut under here. Arrange, Control A. But you don't have to do that because you can see Convert to Curves has its own shortcut, Control Q. So Control Q converts this to a curve, which means now I can manipulate the nodes. You know, I can make an egg out of that. Uh, if I do the same thing with my square, Control Q. Now I can shape it out the way I want. Anyway, once again, Control-Z, 
Control Z brings me back to where I was. Let's learn about align. If I want to align these two objects horizontally, I'm going to select the pink one and then the blue one holding down my shift key. If I click my E, that aligns them horizontally. Now what's important to remember is the one you click first is the one that's going to move. So if I click my square first, hold down shift, then my circle, the E key will move the square. If I want to do them vertically, see I like that square where it is. I'll click my circle, hold down shift, click my C key, which stands for center, that aligns them vertically. If I want to align them on the left edge, that's an L. And then R will align them on the right. Consequential. I can't say that word, consequentially, consequently, whatever it is. If I hold them both down or select them both, my T will align them on the top edge and my B will align them on the bottom edge. That's something you're going to use all the time. It makes drawing so much easier. Now, in addition to that, we have the Snap 2 objects, which uh, I don't always like because it can be annoying, but I do like it a lot of the time. Snap 2 objects is once again under View. You can see it has its own shortcut, Alt-Z. So on the fly, you can always use Alt-Z to turn on Snap 2 objects. And what that means is you can see I can find areas on the object, the edge, midpoint, nodes, center, and let's say I want to snap this center of the circle to the center of the square. You can see it'll find it for me. Bring it to the front here. And uh, now I know it's perfectly aligned. Same as if I find this edge here and I want to snap it to the corner, it'll find that for me. If I use this node here, I want to snap it right to the center of the square. You can see it'll find it for me. So I don't have to worry whether I'm lining it up correctly or not. The system does it for you. Now once you're done with that, like I said, it can be annoying because you're getting all these clues all the time. I can just turn it off on the fly with Alt-Z. And once again, your line can help you do the same thing in the case of the center point. If I cl click both of these, I want the circle in the center of the square. I'll click E and C, which aligns it vertically and horizontally with the square. And let's say I want this uh, circle here to be a window instead of its own object. I'll select this whole thing and another shortcut is combine. That's control L and that turns it into a single object with the circle cut out of the square. Another one we're going to go over here is let me get my bezier. Let's say I'm drawing a shape freehand. A lot of people like to use the bezier tool to shape an object out as they draw it. I find that to be a little time consuming and uh, awkward. Uh, it's difficult to get it exactly how you want. I find it easier to draw with straight lines and then shape it out, but you can do it however you want. Once again, Control Z will bring me back to where I was. So let's say I got my Bezier and I want to draw just a random shape like this. Now these are all straight lines and cusp nodes, which if you know the difference between a cusp node and a smooth node, we're going to talk about that right now. I'm going to marquee select my nodes using my shape tool and turn these lines into curves because they're straight lines now. So I turn them into curves. That means I can shape them now the way I please. And these are 
cusp nodes so I can just shape my line out the way I want. Cusp node means the line gets to the node and it can change direction independent of what the other line is doing. Now if I change it to a smooth node, that's up here on my toolbar, make node smooth. You can see a smooth node means that the line passes smoothly through the node without changing direction or without sharply changing direction. So when you move one side, the other side moves with it. Now, the keyboard shortcut to change a node is just the letter C. So if I have this node selected, it's smooth, and if I click C, that puts it back as a cusp, meaning I can shape the line without moving the other side of the line. And if I click C again, it's back to a smooth. So when you're drawing, you're going to use that command all the time. It's so much easier than going up here with your mouse to change these nodes. Now if I give this a fill, get rid of my... No, I'll keep my outline. Let me get rid of that node just with the delete key. Um, if I want to break this curve apart for whatever reason, you can see that break node apart right here, break curve, is control 3. That's another one I use all the time. Control 3 breaks it apart, which means now it's an open curve. There's no fill anymore. And I can shape it out, do whatever I want. And if I want to join it again, what I can do is marquee select my nodes. And you can see the shortcut for that is control 2. And that joins my shape again into a vector uh, closed uh, vector object. Um, to be honest, the control 2 and control 3, I don't remember if I set those myself or if that is the default. I've been doing it for so long. But I'm going to show you how to set your own keyboard shortcuts in a moment. But first, I'm going to show you one more thing. Let's, uh, let's do some text. We'll use a cool font, Bookman. And then uh, I'll just type some random text here. whatever I want. Now this is artistic text. Artistic text, as you may know, means you can manipulate it however you want. You can stretch it this way, stretch it that way. You can skew it. You can uh, convert it to curves. You can do whatever you want. Control Z brings you back to where you were. Now, if I hit Control F8, that converts it to paragraph text. And if you're familiar with paragraph text, there's a lot of uses for that as well. Uh, but you cannot manipulate the actual characters. All you can do is change the paragraph characteristics and the point size. Uh, but there are different way, different reasons you're going to use paragraph and artistic text and control F8 will switch you back and forth between artistic and paragraph. So there's a, another one I use all the time and you will too if you're working with text. Now I mentioned custom shortcuts. If you want a shortcut that's not in the default For instance, a few years ago I had a wireless keyboard and it was a very small one and the, the function numbers only went up to 10. And the keyboard shortcut for outline is F12. It opens up my outline menu. But that keyboard didn't have an F12. So what I did was went up here to Tools, uh, uh, Options, Customization. I think you could also do it this way. Tools. Customization. Yeah, it does the same thing. Uh, right here, Commands. 
you can see this tab is shortcut keys. So you can find the command you want, which is kind of difficult sometimes, but fill and outline in this case. Then I'll go down here to pen. You can see this displays my keyboard shortcut as F12, which is the default. So since I didn't have an F12, I gave it a new one. Now make sure you pick one that's not all already used for something else, or at least something that you use. So I'll do something like Control P, which I don't know what that actually is. But if I assign Control P, now I can use Control P as my shortcut to open up my outline menu. I'm not going to do that because that's not what it, I use it for. I have an F12 on this keyboard. But anyway, whenever you don't have a shortcut or you want to change the current shortcut to something else, that's the way to do it. So, shortcuts. Practice with those. Learn the ones you use the most. Become familiar with them and, and memorize them. And you'll find yourself using shortcuts all the time as opposed to uh, constantly using your mouse. So, there's a few tips for you. And I hope your next project goes well.